before you get into your programming using VBA, whether it be in Excel, Word, PowerPoint or Access, it's good to know about variables and what they do. So what do variables do? Well, they store information. So in the same way that if you might remember, if you're doing something, say, at school with, say, algebra or something, you'd say x equals 1, y equals 2, and then you put the two together, x plus y equals 3. Well, the x and the y are variables because you could put something else into them instead, such as x equals 3, and then y could still be equal to, and the answer would be 5. So what it's doing is you're basically taking a number, a bit of text, or a date, or something, and storing it in something that else that you can use later. So they store numbers, but they also store text as well, which is known as a string. They can store a date, which also includes the time. So the time, it does the date as a whole number, and then a decimal place, and then anything to the right of it indicates the time. So zero would be like midnight, and 0.5 would be midday, and so on. You have Boolean, which is basically true or false. And that can be really useful as well, just to get a yes or no. Objects are things on the screen, which could be buttons, they could be pictures and things like that. And that's basically what an object is. You have variants. So basically a variant is when you don't know what's going to be stored. And when you do that, it kind of just takes up as much space as possible. And that is the thing about variables is each one of them takes up a different amount of space in the computer memory. Not something you have to worry about too much as you once did when computers didn't have very much memory, but you do need to think of them surprisingly on a lot of mobile devices so that they don't have to take up too much space there. So the other thing is numbers. So all of these things take up a bit of space and numbers do the same and there's different types of numbers. So here we go, just running down the side here. You might just need a small number, whole number, that is not negative, which would be a byte. And it takes up one byte of information in your memory. And it can go anywhere from 0 to 255. You've got integers, which are whole numbers. And they take up two bytes. And you can see here it goes from minus 32,768 to 32,767. You have long, which is actually a long integer. They take up four bytes, and you can see a much, much bigger number there. You can see that it's like, what is that, two trillion, minus two trillion, roughly to two trillion, very big number. You've got currencies as well. I must admit, I never really used the currency one, but you can see it's got decimal places in here as well. So if you want decimal places, then you would use something like a single or a double. And the single takes up only two bytes and a double four. So in the scheme of things today, not really much in it. If in doubt, always go for the bigger one. So bytes, integers and long are basically whole numbers. If you're not sure, go for the biggest one, which is long. If you need decimal places and you're not sure whether to go for single or double, go for the double. So basically, assigning a variable is dimensioning, and that is because it's taking up a bit of space in your memory. So that's what you're doing. You're basically giving it a dimension, if you like, a size. You don't have to do it, but it's normally a good idea to, and you will see people who do use VBA and don't actually put it in there. However, there are some advantages. It helps with consistency of naming and you're going to see just how that works in just a moment and you'll see exactly what I mean and why that is useful. So dimensioning is useful because it will help you. So just how do you dimension? And we're going to take a look at this in a moment. But with VBA, it helps you fill in the blanks. You always start off by saying DIM, which is short for dimensioning. And then if you would start typing something in, such as below here, I've got dim, and I've, which is dimension. And then I'm going to give an employee name, which is a variable like you had with x, as a string. There's a little s in front of the employee name. Some people do that. So that s is telling it that it is a string, just so that when you look at it, you know that it is. And you can see here as well for a date, 
I've just put a D in there, but D could be double. So maybe that's not a good choice. But what you can see is when I've been naming it, I've actually put in here a capital E and a capital N, which makes it a little bit easier to read. And you're going to see just in a moment when I actually show you quickly an example just how useful that can be. There are also constants, which are built-in variables, if you like. They have a preset number. They work in kind of the same way. So rather than taking X and being able to tell it what it is, uh, VBA already has something already in there. So ones that you have, of, like in message boxes, you could have a yes or no response, and they are known as VB yes and VB no, and they have pre-assigned values, so they are constants. But also kind of, you know, it's actually storing a value there as well. So just looking at VBA in Excel, and you can actually see some of these things. I'm here on my developer tab. I'm going to go into macros and just call one called my variables. You know you can't have spaces when you give a macro a name. I'm just going to click on create. So what I said before was about the dimensioning bit. So you'll see if I type in dim and I type in s employee, let's spell it correctly, name as, and this is a bit where I said it would help you fill in the blanks. So as I start typing string, you can see it's there and I press enter. So I had another one, dim d starts date as date. And you use the same one if you're doing some time in there as well. So I just want to show you with an input box, just using s employee name. And one of the useful things about dimensioning it up there is if I do s employee name, see I didn't capitalize anything and I did mistype it, equals input box. I'm just going to put anything in, enter name. When I press enter to move to the next line, the useful thing is, can you see what's happened? It's capitalized the E and the N. Okay, so if I didn't use variables, because you don't always have to use them, let's say I've got another one in there. I'm going to call it like the name of, say, the boss. And I'm going to call it boss name. And I do the same thing. And I type in input box and then I'm going to do the same again so just bear with me because now you'll see where dimensioning actually comes in handy so let's have a message box I'm going to just combine the two together Ms. and then we'll just put in here you don't need to know about how any of this really works but look at this s employee name and then I'm just going to join it up I'm not going to type anything else in there just uh, the boss name okay so this is called concatenation joining all these together so I'm just going to do s boss name and I'm not oh, I should type it correctly shouldn't I okay so I'm going to press enter now see what happens that E and the N have capitalized again, but the boss name here has stayed as it is, and actually it's changed it over here. So by dimensioning it, it helps you keep naming conventions, therefore making it easier to read. So that's a quick look at variables. You're going to need them when we do some of our other projects as well. So we're going to be taking a look at things like if statements, loops, input boxes, message boxes, and things like that. So now you know a little bit about what dimensioning can actually do.